Hello and welcome to this month's Maggie Moment. Today I'm going to chat about how we can raise optimistic children. <sighs> Sounds great, doesn't it? We want them optimistic and happy. Yeah, we really do. Now, the first thing you need to know is that optimism can be passed on the gene pool, as can pessimism. So we can actually have that from our ancestral line. So, you know, sometimes that's a little thing we have to work with. One of the first things that children do is they learn mostly off us, seriously. So if you're naturally quite an optimistic, positive person around moments that are challenging, um, then your child's going to pick up those sorts of things. So that's the very first one. Try and be as optimistic as you can yourself. But that doesn't mean to say you have to be chirpy when things aren't chirpy. It's, I think it's in those moments when challenging moments happen, I call them bugger moments sometimes, or the imperfect parenting moments, that we go, oh dear, oh dear, never mind. I'll just get that cleaned up and move on instead of doing the, the doom and, and drama around that. You know, how could you possibly do that? Or how silly am I? So it's once again going, oh dear, let's fix it. So optimistic children learn that things can go wrong, but that together we can fix it. Another layer, and this is really what Martin Seligman talks a lot about, is helping our children become competent, being able to dress themselves, do things for themselves. So developing their autonomy helps children to be more optimistic about what they're capable of. And another layer underneath that is keep an eye on your children. I talk about this a lot. Find their spark find a special interest and encourage them to do that so they get to be really good at that. So it's really lucky if your child's quite good academically because the school system identifies that and celebrates that and marks that because you can see as a consequence of tests. But I'm going to say so often there's a spark in your child that you might not have identified. You know, have they got music in their soul that you haven't found yet? Um, are they amazing around other children? And some of our older children can do this beautifully and intuitively care for other children with empathy and compassion. Notice these things because we need to say these are some of your strengths. I just want to share a beautiful story of a five-year-old boy I met one time who was struggling in mainstream schooling. Just wasn't his thing. There was too much sitting down. Anyway, I went and visited and his mum was a friend of mine. And over the period I was there for the hour, he kept bringing in a different duck. He was into ducks. He knew about ducks that spermed other ducks and how many, how long it took for the eggs to come out, hatch out into ducklings. And he brought all these ducks in one at a time, told me their names, how old they were, and um, which one came from which one. And it was just, his little face just shone. So if you want an optimistic child, we need to find something that puts the shine in their eyes, that makes them feel enthusiastic about something. And I want you to really think about that and have conversations with those who are around you raising your children. Because sometimes even pessimistic children have got something. And one of my beautiful sons is a tad pessimistic, but surfing in our wild ocean, you should see the look on his face. He's, he glows for hours, but he will sometimes slip back in. So again, model it, make it a conscious conversation we sometimes have about overcoming things instead of getting stuck in them. And if you can, I'd love to put lots of little positive messages up around the house about believing in yourself and having a great day and just feed that mind in the right direction for being optimistic. And I hope you keep smiling when things go a bit wobbly. So that's all for me today. And don't forget, you can always comment underneath if you've got some great ideas that have built optimism in your children.